if you want to achieve greatness, mm -hmm. you have to be, you have to be a bit crazy. Yeah. You have to Oh, the rep, right? Much like in a startup. Yes, man, and, and let's get some of our old soldiers back out. Musicians to be professional. They know how to talk. To help them wake up happy. It's not about a rectangle and a price. All right, y'all. It's another episode of Bank That Radio Show. I'm your host, Andreas, and I have with us via Zoom, John Hewitt, who is a renowned American entrepreneur who has made a significant impact in the business world through his innovative ideas and strategic thinking. He is best known for his success in tax preparation industry, having founded two of the largest tax preparation companies in the United States, John Hewitt and Liberty Tax. Both companies represent two of the top 100 largest retail organizations in North America. A few more uh, facts. And um, first of all, you have a fantastic career, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, in 2012, Liberty Tax uh, Service operated over 4,000 locations in the U.S. and Canada. International Franchise Association Entrepreneur of the Year 2005. Accounting Today, Top 100 Most Influential People, 2000 to 2012, a best-selling author, I Compete, How My Extraordinary Strategy for Winning Can Be Yours in 2016, Inc. Magazine, 1992, John Hewitt ranked second in the tax industry. It was one of the fastest growing private companies in the U.S. Thanks, John, for coming on. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So... I was going through and I was um, just, you know, trying to absorb all the information. I'm like, your career is older than me. <laughs> I'm Wrong older than you. This is my 50-50 year. Yes. So you got some years on me. Um, but I do love it. I'm a business uh, graduate. Um, and I, I just love business. And everything you've been able to accomplish, I'm sure, um, you were like innovative and you set the pace for how other people could accomplish uh, things. One thing I really wanted to get into, um, especially like, you know, reading your profile and, you know, the question is ready to answer, but I saw something that struck out about me about the uh, ideas uh, for shows, which was uh, guerrilla marketing. And I want you to tie that in because I uh, studied guerrilla marketing outside of college. I ran into it because I have a degree in marketing but it was never like taught in school. I've uh, found some books when I was at the bookstore and just started getting more into it. So tell us, how did guerrilla marketing help shape the vision and execution of growing both of those tax businesses? Well, I learned a long time ago that, uh, say, um, Andreas, you said you're a student of business. I've been a student of business before, long before you were born. Yes. And I read a book called Guerrilla Market. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And what what would I train my people? For example, we have eight different industries, but in in the tax preparation industry, what I tell my franchisees is in this country, mm -hmm. there are there are over 32 million small businesses. Mm -hmm. So there's over 32 million companies or individuals that are trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And in each of my franchise territories, there are, so if you divide that by the number of territories in the country, each of my territories has about 3,000 businesses that are trying to get their attention of all, of all different kinds of industry. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, they have 10 or 20 competitors. Mm -hmm. So everyone's trying to get their attention. So what you have to think of when you try to market your name, get brand name, get a customer, you have to think, do I want to do the same as everyone else is doing? Do I want to be on Google? Do I want to be on Facebook, TV, radio, newspaper, direct mail? Do I want to do the same old, same old? Or do I want to stand out? 
Tax season is here. Maximize your refund legally with the tax office that has the experience. Barber's Tax and Credit Repair is available to assist you. Meet with any of the tax repairs that will gather some basic information and be able to set you up with the best refund possible. This includes sitting down with your preparer and navigating that process. Upon completion, you will be confident in knowing that you have maximized and gotten the best refund possible. Go ahead, get started today with a consultation and schedule your appointment. Call one 877 752552 Barber's Tax and Credit Repair they are here for you Well I learned a long time ago that I want to stand out I want differentiators mm-hmm. and I want to do things that that no one else is doing and so that's what we do and you have to have differentiators if David had gone on to the field with the same sword and the same shield and armor is Goliath, there Mm -hmm. wouldn't be any David and Goliath story. Maybe the 189th guy killed by Goliath. Mm -hmm. So you have to have differentiators. And, uh, you know, my franchisees over the years, we've been competing against H&R Block in the tax industry. They spend $100 million every year in just national TV and radio. Mm -hmm. Whoever spends the most is going to win. And if you be happy that that's not the right way, that's not the cheapest way to get customers. Mm-hmm. Guerrilla marketing is the cheapest ways to get customers. And I can give you hundreds of examples of ways that we get customers that no one else is doing. Not only not in our industry, but in any industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so can you just name like two things then since you know you have hundreds of examples? Yeah, one yeah, sure. One one thing is very obvious. In in both my last two companies, mm-hmm. ATAP and Liberty Tax, mm-hmm. we have costume characters that go out in front of the office and dance. Mm-hmm. So it's easy with the Lady Liberty at ATAX, we have an ego costume. Mm-hmm. And what we find is about every two hours a customer will come in and and uh, have us tax run done just by seeing this waiver. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Andreas, how many, uh, Andreas, how many businesses, how many costume characters do you see on the way to work each day? Mm. Almost done, right? No yeah. one sees yeah, it's there. Probably, yeah. So there are 3,000 businesses around every one of my offices, but there's no almost no one that has a, a costume character. Mm -hmm. And how many of those businesses would an average consumer be able to name? They wouldn't be able to name 100, not even 50. But if Mm -hmm. you saw a costume character every day Mm -hmm. waving at you and dancing in the street, that would be one of the the things that you remember. We also go B2B, and there was a great story. You know, we have one of my best marketers ever. She goes out and trains franchisees. Mm-hmm. And she went into an auto dealer and said, uh, just last Friday, she said, with the franchisee in tow, in costume, in her mm-hmm. eagle costume, and said, guess, and they were saying, well, what do you want? And she mm-hmm. said, guess what people buy most with their tax refunds? And they were like, Cra-. I mean, they didn't know. So she pointed out the window, cars. Mm-hmm. By the time she left, they were doing a live remote and a um, uh, a radio show, and mm-hmm. they invited her to be on the live remote and the radio show, so to talk about getting tax refunds, so they could buy their automobile. Yeah, so the uh, things like that that no one else is doing. Mm-hmm. Right? No one else. How many? How many people have come into your radio show dressed in costume with? Here's some candy. Here's some donuts. Here's some pizza. We want, you know, we want to um, just let you know that we're we're located two blocks from here. You're far and few in between, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like you know, every blue moon I'll just get stuff. I had a, uh, I actually did an interview the other day where a lady brought me a representation of what she did. She put gift baskets and stuff together, and I thought, you know, what I'm saying, you know, it's stuff like that that sticks out. It helps with the branding. You get to, you know, put a name with something, you know, and it becomes uh, synonymous. So as you're building in the position that you have with the organizations, 
like what type of like mindset does one need to have to be able to take on something like that? Well, first of all, you you got to be kind of crazy, mm -hmm. right? I, I tell people I walk the tightrope of crazy mm -hmm. because when I set out, when I left H&R Block and decided to start Jackson Hewitt, mm -hmm. well, H&R Block had 9,000 locations mm. and we had six, mm. not 6,000, six. Yeah, six. Yeah. So we said we went from six to 11 to 15 to 22. Mm -hmm. Today, Jackson Newton had 6,000 ups. Mm. But we set a goal mm -hmm. that each in our block had 9,000. We wanted to have 9,001. Now, that to any rational person, is that reality? That's ridiculous. That's crazy. You mm -hmm. have to, if you want to achieve greatness, mm -hmm. you have to be, you have to be a bit crazy. Yeah. You have to be unrealistic. I interviewed a, uh, one of my employees one time was a pessimist mm -hmm. and he had we had an annual retreat of the executive committee or mm -hmm. of the executive team and i said to the next year i told his boss i didn't want him to attend he said well he's going to be he's going to behave this year he's going to he and i said well let me talk to him with you there and i called him in and i said Are, do you think you're an optimist and a pessimist and or a pessimist. He said, I like to think of myself as a realist. Mm -hmm. well, I said, in 2000, when we started this company, this was at Liberty Tax. Mm -hmm. I told you about Jackson Hewitt. Now, when we started Liberty Tax, mm -hmm. now I had to compete against my own name and my own software and my own system. Yeah. And I had to compete against 9,000 HR blocks. Mm -hmm. So I said, I said, Ron, is this realistic that when we started this company that you work for, that has 3,000 offices, right? Mm -hmm. When we started, we had zero offices. Mm -hmm. And not only did we have to compete with 9,000 H&R Block, we had to compete with 6,000 Jackson Hewitts. Mm -hmm. would, it would have been realistic 12 years ago to say, you know what, in 12 years, we're going to have 3,000 offices. We're going we're gonna to grow fast, not only faster than Jackson Hewitt, faster than H&R um, Block and Jackson Hewitt combined. So was that realism? I said, you got to, in this company, if you want to achieve great things, you have to have set big, hairy, audacious goals. Mm -hmm. I definitely, unrealistic. Uh, you have to be a bit unrealistic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all the people I've been interviewing thus far, and I've been uh, podcasting since, since 2016, and like you said, the people who have those visions and those big, hairy, audacious goals, audacious goals um they all have that in common you have to go and think big and i think uh i ran across somebody who said if your goals aren't big enough uh or or if they don't scare you they're not big enough so you want something that seems like very unrealistic um to chase after and and, and, mm -hmm. and you know you know andres it, it has a side benefit we did not, you know, our goal was to have 9,001 offices. Mm -hmm. We only got to 6,000, mm -hmm. but we became a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. I'm one of only a thousand people in this country that have ever founded a billion dollar company. Even mm -hmm. though we didn't quite get all the way there, mm -hmm. we got to a billion dollar company. Yeah, which is fantastic. I'm like, I'm like, there's people can't even get to a million dollars, let alone a hundred thousand. So, I'm like, it's this, especially starting from like, you know, scratch with you no know, nothing really to help uh, push you forward. So do you believe that, you know, uh, anyone or everyone can be an entrepreneur? What's your philosophy behind that? No, I don't at all. Uh, what I've learned and, and I brought in in my career, I brought in 5,200 franchisees mm -hmm. and a thousand became millionaires and a thousand went out of business. Mm -hmm. And what I what I learned is that over about 70 percent of America wants mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but only about 20 or 25 percent can do it. Mm -hmm. And it, it requires and, and the biggest reasons that they fail are they're not risk takers. Mm -hmm. So and everyone faces adversity. I've never seen anyone achieve anything without without going suffering. I mean, you're mm -hmm. always. There's always obstacles to overcome. 
And so when it gets, when the going gets tough, uh, some people don't get going. Mm -hmm. And so they don't, they're not risk takers and, or they're not Mm self-starters. You know, some people need a boss to say, you need to be there by 830 every morning. Mm -hmm. And, or they, they don't have, they don't have the discipline to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, there's just a couple of, of the shortfalls I see that, that there are a lot more people that want to be entrepreneurs than, than have the capability to be entrepreneurs. Do you feel that uh, with today's um, media, so like let's say Shark Tank and The Profit shows like that, I like the fact that people are being inspired. But you, do you think that the way those type of platforms and how people look at entrepreneurship nowadays, especially with social media, social media, is being presented in a manner to where they're not necessarily showing everything that you need to do or how difficult it is to be an entrepreneur? No, I don't think, I just think they gloss over all that. And I, I mean, I don't put a lot of thought into it. So I, I haven't put deep thought into, to the answer to your question, Mm -hmm. but my, my initial impression is, no, there's a lot, um, it, it, there's a lot of slogging, um, um, preparation. It's Mm -hmm. not in, in, when you're in a competition, whether it's a a sport, Mm -hmm or a card game or business mm-hmm. preparation is more important than perform. I mean, you can't have great performance without great preparation. Mm-hmm. And I think that that site misses those might miss the thousands and thousands of hours of work that mm-hmm. went into those people getting to that place. Mm-hmm. So what do you feel uh, over your career has been your top strengths? Top what? Strengths. You know, I think that the key to my success is the ultimate key. And of course, there's many, many characteristics of success and elements mm-hmm. of success that you need to have. Um, but the number one thing I think that is that has propelled me is I always want what's more for every person that I deal with uh, than I want what's best for them. Mm-hmm. And um, too many people when they deal with a franchisee or an employee or a customer, they want what's the best for themselves. Mm-hmm. And I always want what's best for every person. So that that has driven me. And, and that's why we call our company Loyalty Brands. I have mm-hmm. I have three people that have been with me 35 years and five that have been with me for 30 years and five for 25 years. So I've, I've always had great loyalty because the only way to get loyalty is to give loyalty. Mm-hmm. So it's doing what's best for others. So tell us more about the loyalty brands then, because you built the two tax companies, but then loyalty brands seems more of a conglomerate where it has multiple wings to it. And exactly. The franchise have, and model. With Jackson Hewitt, I had one franchise or mm-hmm. with, with Liberty tax, I had one franchise or now we have eight different franchisors. So uh, yeah, we're, we're helping a lot of people in, in seven different industries. So with that, um, okay, so the people, they say that, you know, the people that you hire and you keep around you should be, you know what I'm saying, as good as you are or better. Um, the people that have been and stuck around you, are they visionaries like yourself or are you still the one setting the motion for everything? You know, I've heard a lot of people say that they want people that are better than themselves around them. I'm I'm not a big fan of that, mm-hmm. uh, but what I am a huge fan of is that every everyone I know has weaknesses, mm-hmm. and um, so what you want, what I want to always have is someone who's good at my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So I'm not good at detail, so I need a really detailed person, mm-hmm. right? I and um, so I you hire people to. Um, strengthen your weaknesses mm-hmm. because um, p- people with um, Peter Drucker, great business author wrote people with great strengths have great weaknesses. I mm-hmm. have great strengths. Therefore I have great weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And so the people that I hired that are better than me are better at things that I'm ideally things that I'm not good at. Mm-hmm. As a person in your position and what you've accomplished how often 
did you have the chance to read material like books? Because I've, uh, I've read and seen in interviews where you, a lot of high profile people will say that, you know, you need to read and consume information a lot to be able to go out there and perform. Yeah, up until up until I turned 70, I read about 25 business books a year. Mm. Were they, you know, various, uh, you know, topics as far as like, you know, one would be about like, you know, I guess accounting and, you know, development and things of the nature of the dates stay within the same realm? Um, most of the books were on uh, managing people, building businesses. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, the, most most of the books, but just a wide variety of, of, of books. But I'm almost always on building businesses. For example, if I found a a biography like um, Made in America by Sam Walt, mm -hmm. or the Wal the Avis story by Walter Avis, mm -hmm. or Nuts by Herb Kelleher of Southwest Airlines. Whenever mm -hmm. I could find a book on the growth of a company mm -hmm. and the trials and tribulations mm -hmm. and lessons learned, I would grab those books. So what has been a common denominator in businesses and growing them? Is there something that, you know, you had to do with all your endeavors? Yeah. The, well, one thing, um, one of my favorite authors, too, Stan Phelps, mm -hmm. he, in one of his books, he said, no one ever, almost no one ever arrives at a meeting exactly on time. Mm -hmm. If the meeting is 4 p.m., you're either a little early or a little late. Almost no one walks in exactly when the clock strikes 4. Mm -hmm. And he said, in the same manner, customer service, people don't meet exactly meet customers' expectations. Mm -hmm. They always, almost always, fail to meet them or exceed their expectations. They rarely meet them exactly. And so the the thing in common is uh, striving to exceed customer expectations. Go to a higher and higher percentage of exceeding customers' expectations. How important is uh, balancing yourself? Because, you know, we can go out here and we can do business and we can accomplish great things. But then, you know, there's also the giving back to the community and philanthropy. How important is that to you? Well, in in all of my companies, I've taught that um, you're required to give back. Mm -hmm. And and uh, people say, well, I'm 74 years old. Why do you still work? Well, because I'm at the... I, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one is I don't know what I would do if I didn't work. Yeah. I love it so much. But um, and I'm at the peak of my experience and knowledge. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, I to go sit on the beach somewhere is such a waste of time. Mm. So I was I'm proud that in the you know, when we sold Jackson Hewitt for four hundred eighty three million dollars mm -hmm. uh, in December of 97. In January 98, I started Liberty Tax, but I also started a world hunger organization. Mm -hmm. And it was just myself and one Methodist minister mm -hmm. called to help in world hunger. And for the first two, two and a half years, I put in all the money and he did all the work. Now I'm proud to say that that uh, there are hundred over 100 employees and we've mm -hmm. distributed over 500 million meals in 56 countries. Wow. So, yeah, I, it's I teach. We teach every franchisee mm -hmm. as you succeed, you are required to give back. And I also learned, Andreas, a valuable lesson long ago. And I was about probably about your age. Mm -hmm. And I as I was beginning to get wealthy, I started giving more. And I learned I can't outgive God. The more you give, the more you get. So, so I love it. It's almost selfish to give because the yeah. more you give, the more you get. And, it, yeah. and it never, I never give it, get back more from that one person, but mm -hmm. something good happens to you. Mm -hmm. Something, some business or personal event happens that's better than I gave. Yeah. I, I, I definitely, uh, I love that. Um, I know you're, you're a best-selling author as, as well, correct? I'm what? 
a best-selling author? Yes. Yep. How my book that? is available, mm -hmm. and if any anyone wants it, they can. It's called "I Can Beat," and I'll mail you one if you just uh, send me your address at at john at loyaltybrands dot com. I'll mail out a free book to anyone. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do that. How was that process for you sitting down there writing a book? Because, you know, you have this, all this knowledge and all this experience. So you, I don't imagine you could just put everything in one book. No, it's, um, it, we published a book about eight years ago. So mm -hmm. it was from, from when I was born and mm -hmm. my first entrepreneurial venture when I was four until all the way up until about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, Actually, I had a, a ghostwriter, mm -hmm. and she would sit down and tape me. And I have a I have a, some some um, unique thoughts. I think or mm -hmm. I, I think of them as unique. Mm -hmm. And so we would write a chapter um, about the history, my history, but then talk about the lesson I learned mm -hmm. in in, uh, and that would be a chapter. So mm -hmm. my unique ideas are chapters of the book with exam real life examples of, of how it played out. I like that. Um, so your goals now for like loyalty brand, you know, you had big goals for the tax businesses. What are the big goals for loyalty brands? In each of our brands to be number one in the industry. Mm. So one of our brands is a, roofing company so mm -hmm. we want to be the number one roofing company in in america hmm. does that scare everyone who like you know comes and works for you when you have like you know these big goals and you know the other people who are there to do their job so you can get to those goals are they in line with it if if they got scared and mm -hmm. they're not the right people to be on the team so it they weed themselves out Mm -hmm. And there are, yes, there are people that my goals are too audacious. Mm -hmm. And so they, they would, uh, they, st they, um, stay off the team. Mm. So it's like a natural, just weeding out process. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. How has business in general changed over the years? Say it again. How has business changed over the years, just in general? What have you seen? I'm. I would say that um, I've been disappointed in my lifetime with the service, the quality of service in this country. Mm. The quality of service continues to, on a yearly basis, to go downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, people have uh, do not offer the great quality of years past. It's hard, harder and harder to find. What do you think attributes to that? I think our society has become um, ungrateful. Mm. I mean, I try to teach gratefulness, mm -hmm. that, and that's what drives me. And I, I've never had a bad day as long as I can remember mm -hmm. because um, I'm just grateful for the blessings that I've had my mm -hmm. whole life. But I can't even teach my own. I have six children, and I say to be alive and healthy and live in the United States, you're the top 1% luckiest person on the planet and mm -hmm. they don't get it mm -hmm. so i think i think we're we're ungrateful as a society we don't mm -hmm. appreciate our blessings do you think there's a way that we can course correct that we can do what do you think there's a way where we can correct that course and you know change andreas i've tried to change people's attitude i mistakenly tried to change hundreds and hundreds of people's attitude. Mm -hmm. And I've learned the lesson that Tom Watson Sr., one of the founders of IBM, mm -hmm. he, he said 100 years ago, he said, give me 100 great engineers mm -hmm. or 100 great people with great attitudes that know nothing about engineering. And mm -hmm. I'll take the people with great attitudes because you can teach engineering. You can't mm -hmm. teach attitude. So I've, I've given up on trying to change people's attitudes. Mm -hmm. So when we go to hire people, mm -hmm. we we first look not at their skill set, but at their attitude. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely 
I, I feel you on that one because the, the quality of people and, you know, even the small businesses I've had, you know, it's been difficult finding, you know, like you said, people are there to do a quality job. And then the sense of entitlement is just seems like it's at an all time high now. I don't know where, you know what I'm saying, they're going to go or the future, you know, business leaders and leaders in general um, of this uh, nation and stuff. Um, I, I did have a question. Do you uh, feel that current politics influences future business? Um, no, not, not in a major way, not in the, not in the tax business. I think that, that it might have, when it affects the economy, mm -hmm. uh, one, one, uh, party, mm -hmm. uh, hurts the economy, then it affects my business, but not, not otherwise. Mm -hmm. At this point in your life, are you are you satisfied with everything that you've accomplished so far? Oh, I'm never satisfied. I'm always <laughs> I'm always driven. <laughs> I, I you it. know, the name of my book is I Compete, and uh -huh. I live to compete every hour on the hour. So, if I meet you, I might bet a die. We're arguing about something that mm -hmm. who said, "Give me liberty or give me death," right? Mm -hmm. And I'll bet you a dollar that I'm right, or mm -hmm. a dollar on the the uh, football game, or yeah. on. Playing, we'll be playing a card game. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm always, always trying to improve, get better, change mm -hmm. people's lives. When you're not uh, focused on your businesses, um, what do you like to do? Like you know, in spare time, I, I play in. Uh, I'm a chess player and okay. a bridge player, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, horse race follower. I guess those okay. are my three, three things that I like. When it's all said and done, what do you think you have would have accomplished by then? I've I've changed it. You know, I, as I said, I brought in over fifty two hundred franchisees. Mm -hmm. We had hundreds of thousands of employees. Thousands of them became millionaires. I've changed mm -hmm. tens and tens of thousands of people's lives. I've made this world a better place. Do you think it's possible for others to have? To follow, like you know, in your footstep, and to have the impact that you've had thus far, or do you I think can it's give like you names big? of hundred? Well, the, the full impact that I've had, or just a piece of pay it forward. Well, you know, just like you said, you've had five thousand something franchisees. Right. You've made millionaires and hundred hundredaires and things of that nature. The in, the total impact that you've had just over your career it can seem like, you know, daunting to others. So do you think there are other people capable following in the same, you know, trajectory of whether, you know, text business, things of that nature, or can people duplicate what you've done? I think that um, there are people that have done that. I'm in a rarefied air of the most successful people ever, one thousandth of 1%. But mm -hmm. I listened to Elon must say the other day and and it's and they use an argument for this mm -hmm. that he, he has had more impact on the human race positive impact than any other human being ever mm -hmm. and when you think of it all these all these electric cars are mm -hmm. you know uh, and his rocket his rockets into outer space mm -hmm. might save the human race when the when the sun burns up one day yeah. Um, maybe yes, but no, I'm not certainly the best. Mm -hmm. but, um, I'm in a rare, I'm, I've been blessed and, and, and I don't attribute to myself. I, I attribute to just taking the blessings that I've been given mm -hmm. and, and uh, doing a good job at, at using them to, to change lives. Well, John, I know you're busy with your time. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the jewels. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for the interview. And, uh, like, you know, I'll leave you with the last, you know, closing remark. Well, first of all, it's been a great pleasure. Love, I love helping people and changing lives. But don't forget it. Um, you can get a lot of tips on business if you'll. And, and I talk about my mistakes as well as the things I've done well in in my book. So if you send me. You can get the book online, but you can get one for free just by emailing me at uh, john at loyaltybrands.com. Um, and it'll be one of the, it'll be a, it'll be a help to 
most business people in improving their in improving their skills. I'm definitely going to take you up on that. I'm going to send you my address here in a moment. But thank you, John. I appreciate it. And everybody out there, you can go look up John's amazing career. You can learn from it. You can go get the book, I Compete. And as always, y'all can go and follow all social media, make that radio show at gmail.com. Thank you.